first online interview. I've done a couple in person with uh, friends and family, but just getting it going. So yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. It's it's not hard. You can do it. You'll be fine. Just uh, uh, do you have do you have questions prepared for me? Well, just was going through your web website and just uh, seeing how well you're doing. Like uh, this will work well with my niche, but definitely seeing another successful you're web show host online and what he's doing with your website and uh, just reading your about page and your revenue, uh, how you put everything on. Sure. Uh, cool. I mean, have you, when I, when I asked that, I mean, have you like, before doing the interview, did you go and kind of like write some questions and kind of get an idea of what you're going to ask me? Uh, just a, li just a little bit, like, uh, just, you know, what, how you, how you kind of got, got started back again and why you're, diversifying with the web show and how is it going for you so far yeah just sure okay yeah cool okay well uh whenever you want to start recording you can we can start out okay i've got the little call recorder here so i just push the record button then mm -hmm. just push the record button okay all right i just pushed it <laughs> all right sure, okay <laughs> okay so uh thanks mike for coming out here i've definitely seen you a lot in our uh, create on awesome interview uh, insider stuff and enjoyed some of the comments going so sure how, how long have you been doing the web show and what kind of got that idea in your head how long have I been doing the web show um, well here's the thing I've been doing stuff online now for I don't know it's been maybe since 2007 I've been doing different internet marketing things online back in 2006 2007 I started doing CPA marketing, being okay. that I would buy paid traffic and drive it to uh, different uh, advertisements where when people put in their email, I would get a commission from it. So I was doing that for a while and I made quite a bit of money doing that. I had, at one point, I had about $100,000 in my bank account. And mm -hmm. um, after doing that, I decided that I would go and travel the world for a while because I said, hey, I can, I can work from anywhere. And just get my computer out and do that. Yeah. So I, I traveled uh, to Turkey in 2008, and while I was here, I wasn't really uh, minding my my business very much, and my income slowly, slowly uh, decreased until it was non-existent. Yeah. So, so I decided, okay, I need to start uh, finding another way of of building an income online, and. Once you once you make money online one time, it's like it's like an addiction. Yeah. You 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 can't get it out of your system. So uh, I started doing uh, AdSense sites, and I made hundreds and hundreds of AdSense sites. I have approximately seven hundred AdSense sites in my portfolio right now. Oh, and okay. yeah, I was doing really well with that until this September two thousand twelve. Uh, it's we're doing this in interview in November now. So about two months ago, uh, there was a, a Google update, and all I was making approximately two thousand dollars a month in AdSense revenue. Plus, I was selling sites at the same time at a multiple of twenty times the value of the last thirty days AdSense income for each site. So mm -hmm. I was making. I think my best month in July, I was doing about seven. I had a, did about. 13,000 in profit in that month. But I mean that was a really good month. Yeah, Normally right. I was doing like 2 or in June I did 6,000. So I was I was doing well online. And the reason why I'm kind of giving you this little history is you asked me what got me into doing interviews. And in about I think it was in September right before my the exact match domain update came and, and squashed my my AdSense income. Uh, right before Google made that update, I said, "Okay, I need to start diversifying how I'm making money online." Because I knew from my previous experience that you can be do, doing something now and it will be working fine, and you'll be making plenty of money doing it. And then it will just at one time something happens. There's a change, and, and Google makes a change, or an advertiser. Or, or something happens and it's all gone. yeah so I decided um, I think the the impetus the catalyst for me wanting to do a web show was 
for some reason, I, I stumbled upon an interview that Corbett Barr did with David Simon Garland. Uh, Corbett Barr runs a, a website called Think Traffic. I don't know if you've, if you've heard of it. It but, sounds um, familiar, yeah. Yeah, you should check it out. He, he's, he's got good stuff. He's the guy who, who is known for the right epic shit. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, if you search for epic shit, Corbett Barr will come up uh, in, your, in your search results. So anyways, I was watching that interview and David was on and they were talking about interviews and um, of course during the show, at the end of the show, David was able to promote something because usually when you do an interview, uh, a lot of times, even if the interview itself isn't necessarily about a specific product, a lot of times the guest will also at the same time need something to promote in order to kind of incentivize them to take the Yeah, the shameless the plug. <laughs> shameless plug at the end of the show. Uh, so, David, very David loves his shameless plug, which is it's completely fine. I love my shameless plugs too. But he plugged his product, create awesome interviews, and I, I wasn't interested in in doing interviews actually. But I, I said, what the heck? I'll I'll click on the link, and I went and I looked at his his little squeeze page, and and I I watched. It was like seven, something like seven reasons why you should do an interview, or something like that, yeah. or seven seven ways you can make mistakes or something i don't i don't remember it but i went and i watched that and i thought it was interesting and i thought david had so much energy because you know how how he is he's i mean he's he's great he's got a great mm-hmm. online personality uh, completely different than mine but for him he's he's perfect but um so i watched that i signed up for the course completely thinking because it's 500 bucks yeah. for his and i was completely thinking this is expensive like 500 dollars is this i'm I don't believe that I'm going to be able to get something worth $500 out of this. So I'll try it. If it's if it sucks, I'll refund it. Yeah. But but I bought it and it was good. Like it's it was a good course. So I I didn't refund it. Thank goodness. And uh yeah, I decided to start doing a web show and I thought if I brought people onto my my show, I could uh, increase readership for my website, increase website sales, uh, increase my own, I don't know, my, my own reach in, in the internet marketing community. And that's what it's done for me. I mean, it's been something where I, I have relationships with people now that I never would have had before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you know, there's a guy named James Clear. He runs a site called PassivePanda.com and it's a very, uh, I don't, how do I explain it? It's a very honest, very intelligent blog about making money, not necessarily online. It's more about, about business in general. And anyways, I, I reached out to him and I, I got an interview with him. He was one of my first interviews. And uh, through that interview, he actually mentioned that he was going to be coming to Istanbul, which is where I, I live. I'm originally from Maine, thus yeah. the MikeMaine.com. Yeah, that was but, another question I was going to ask you. <laughs> I've been to Istanbul, and anyways, he said he's coming to Istanbul. So, I we we he came. We uh, met up. I took him out. Uh, we went out for dinner, and I showed him around, and we talked business. We talked life. Like it was it was cool. Like it was actually cool to take someone that you'd met on the internet and then turn it into something uh, real. So, yeah, that's I'm I'm continuing to do interviews now. I've got. Published, I think I have about 41 interviews, and that's wow. in the last two, a little more than two months now. I've been I've been actively doing interviews. I do five a week. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a journey so far. I think I've done in total I've done probably 55 interviews, but I have them non pub not published yet. So I yeah. have a bunch sitting on my hard drive, and every week. Five interviews go out, but yeah, awesome stuff. So, uh, why did you decide to go with Mike from Maine, even though you're uh, in Istanbul? Good question. Um, I originally bought that domain. I think if you check the registrar, I want to say I bought it in 2008 because at that time I was planning on traveling and I wanted to have a blog where I could keep track of, of my travels so that. My mom could look at it and yeah. 
where I was and my friends could see and it would be just be an easy way of communicating where I was in the world. And I, what I did originally with it is I had like a page where uh, I was backpacking. So I had a page where you could see the backpack that I got. And then I had a page of the places that I was going. And I would, I had these, actually I had these great posts on it of, I was in India for three months and mm -hmm. I had these amazing posts with videos and, and actually really interesting stuff on it about my travels. And since I was traveling at the time, I had plenty of time to just sit down in a park or or in a, in, a, in a bar and sip a beer and just t like write out a, a blog post. But what happened was in, I think it was July of 2011, uh, I had about 26 niche sites, uh, AdSense sites. Okay. I just started my, my sites. And one morning I woke up and all my sites were hacked. And I had mm. this, so open up one site and it was like, you've been hacked. <laughs> And it was uh, all, yeah, all my sites were gone. And I, the, the hosting company I was using, they were really crappy and they didn't help me out at all with, with what I was doing. Uh, and it was, yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. So I had, to, I had to build my sites. I lost everything. I lost my mic from Maine up to that point. Uh, that was gone. So I lost all that great stuff. Aww. But uh, yeah, it sucks. Anyway. <laughs> That's life. That, that teaches you the lesson. Back up your website. Definitely. So, Internet Archive didn't have anything for you. I don't know. I didn't. I don't. I don't think I even looked. Probably maybe it did. I now that you now that you say that to me, I'm like, oh crap! Why didn't I look that? But <laughs> all right. And so uh, you just decided to go with that uh, for uh, your your web interview show then in September, right? Well, here's the thing. I'd already. I'd already okay when I when I first set it up I I had it up as my just my travel personal blog and then after them I turned it into a way of as I was making my AdSense sites I turned it as a way of keeping track of my income so every month and I, I still do this I would publish an income report where I I publish where uh, where my income is coming in from online uh, ventures and I also publish where money's going out so it's it's not just income it's actually the profit coming from it so if i spend five hundred dollars and i make five hundred dollars then i make nothing you know what i mean mm -hmm. i was using it as as kind of a way to keep mm, tracks on my keep track of myself and for my audience which at that time in in july of 2011 my my audience was uh no one i think i had like one guy comment on my on my blog yeah, yeah. so i wasn't about like looking at it, and which is everyone. Everyone starts off that way. You mm -hmm. you start out, no one reading you, no one watching your interviews, no one giving one crap about what you're doing. But if you keep on doing it, uh, pe more people will come. Anyways, so I I started doing that, writing, keeping track of my income reports, and then I started writing posts about how to do keyword research, and I started giving away. Everything that I was doing, or how I was making money, I would write about on my site and um, let people also know how I was doing it too. So I figured I'll give away everything for free yeah. and, and hopefully people will come back and sign up for things through my affiliate links. So okay. as a way of paying me, sign up through affiliate links, I'd make my affiliate commission. It wouldn't cost them any more. I'd give them free information. So uh, so that's kind of where Mike from Maine headed it 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 didn't necessarily i didn't buy the domain thinking of keywords thinking no. of keywords but um it just kind of i i built up my brand as mike from maine i made some guest posts on adsenseflippers.com which is a pretty well known adsense uh niche site website so i made a guest post there um people kind of knew me as mike from maine so i at one point i actually was thinking okay am i going to Am I going to change my brand image? Am I going to change my site to something else? Or am I going to stay with Mike Fermain? Mm -hmm. And for now, I'm Mike Fermain. And okay. for now, it's MikeFermain.com and it's the Mike Fermain Show. But who knows? Maybe in a year's time, I'll make an announcement that we're changing to another domain. And that will be fine because I can just redirect the traffic to my, my new site. And I'll have an email list so I can just 
and that's where I get most of my traffic from is my email list. So I'll send, I'll keep sending out my emails to my list, and they'll just uh, send me the traffic uh, that my way. So it's it's not the decisions that you make with your business now. Things like logos and slogans, yeah, and all those things were much about how is how is my site gonna gonna look? Do I, I need to have this done? This done? This done? It needs to be perfect? Am I gonna use Wistia or am I gonna use YouTube for my videos? It's you can change these things later yeah. on. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not good. But yeah, that's how that's how I became Mike from Maine. And a little side story: the reason why it's Mike from Maine is because when I, I'm originally from Maine, but I went to college in in uh, Virginia, and okay. Mike is a very common name. Every- yeah, I know. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when I was at at college, people. Would try to would give people nicknames, and the easiest way to to figure out who I was was just Mike for me. So uh, hey, Mike, and it, it stuck on. People would actually think my last name was Fromain. <laughs> Mike for me, and I really, I people come up to me in like my senior year of college and be like, Mike, for the longest time I thought your last name was Fromain, and it was <laughs> funny. But, yeah. So there we go. There's there's Mike for me. All right. One question I did have for you uh, going through your website and even during this interview, you're very forward about your numbers, about your profit, how much you spend. You know, what? where does that personal philosophy come from? Because I know going through some other websites and people and stuff, they're, they seem very secretive about how much money they're making, how much this cost and that cost. Yeah, uh, where does that come from? One, Pat Flynn at Smart Passive Income. He's very open with his numbers and I think it makes it Good for people because people reading the people sometimes you'll go and you'll people will say you make I make ten thousand dollars a day doing this or I make a hundred thousand and people don't have an idea of what's realistic yeah and of what you can really do online like the successful people I don't know what Frank Frank Kern is like one of the big huge names of internet marketing and I have no idea how much he makes a day and. It might be it might be a thousand dollars. It might be a hundred thousand dollars. Who knows? But Pat Flynn is like a real person. I know how much he makes. He makes like forty thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. which is huge. I mean that's that's amazing. Yeah. But um, and then there's people like uh, the second influence I have are the AdSense flippers because they also have a, a very open mentality when it comes to uh, numbers and processes and just being. Open and transparent. I guess the, the big word here would be transparent. Mm-hmm. And why am I hiding things from people? I mean, I'm not trying to brag to people. I have some months where I make, I told you, 12000 And then I have other months, if you look on my revenue reports, I have other months where I made like negative $2,000. So yeah. and I think my my last re- revenue report I put up was for September, maybe something around 2000 I made. So it's not like I'm making a lot of money. I'm not, I'm not trying to use it as a bragging I wish I had enough money to brag, but um, it's it's more of a way so that people can see, okay, this guy's legitimate. It builds it builds trust yeah. with my audience because they say, okay, look, this guy isn't some uh, used car salesman guru who's trying to just sell me something. He's also doing something. He's also making money, and he's open about it. So hopefully that's the way it comes off too. I don't want it to come off as – I'm trying to to boast or anything. The only problem I think with with putting information out like that is that your family can see it, and people sometimes have I don't know. It's I think people are a little too sensitive about income, mm-hmm. and in in the culture here, people will just readily go out and ask you a lot of times, "How much money do you make?" and I'm not sure if it's circus culture or just my friends, but they'll they'll uh, they'll ask like, "How much money do you make?" And in Western culture, in American culture, that's not usually a question that you ask people. That's kind of a a personal question. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be that personal. Actually, I mean, it's who cares how much money you make? You know, I guess maybe after a while, the issues can come up, like you and I go out to dinner and then. You think, oh, Mike makes a hundred thousand dollars a month. He should pay for this. Blah blah blah. I don't know. I guess yeah. things like. But other than that, yeah, just try to 
be open with things on my site. Okay, and then I have just have another question. How do you go about uh, setting your goals? My goal, or do you even like, have... <laughs> like your like your uh, your your your, per, your personal uh, goals as far as getting things done? Like you know, doing five interviews a week, keeping keeping things going. You know, what's the motivation there, and how are you you know keeping score there? Yeah, with with the whole doing five interviews a week thing, it's. It's a lot, and but I think that it's for me now. It's it's really important because I'm really trying to put everything I have into my my site right now. I'm trying to make it the best that I can, and in order to build up through in, in order to build a a following and to build yeah to build an audience, you need to connect with other people doing it. Like I'll interview someone, and they might tweet out to their readers that they did an interview or make a post or or send out an email and slowly slowly those people that are on their list will come to my list mm -hmm. so it's it's a slow process and not everyone you interview is going to is going to promote the interview some people don't just don't care like and you just, it's it's really a hit or miss on that and you don't want to beg people you don't want to say please, please post out or please tweet or whatever but it's some people ask just a a little bit of an ask to say yeah hey can you send a uh, Facebook uh, like or a share or, or something but um, some people don't ask like David doesn't ask and I think Andrew D David Seitman Garland at uh, yeah. the ask and Andrew Warner at Mixer G does ask so it's up to you how you feel about that but um, anyways uh, as far as goals go I mean I'm, I'm trying to get my produce my shows get better guests uh, in the beginning you're going to have a lot of people that no one knows about, uh, you're going to be interviewing your mom and your dad. <laughs> but uh, after a while, like you'll you'll get some guests on the show that you might not think are that big, but they'll send you a crap load of traffic. Or you might uh, get some guests on your show that you think aren't that uh, aren't that popular, but your audience will love them. Mm -hmm. Like you, surprised about about the reaction of your audience uh, towards your guests. So. Yeah, my, my goals for the site is to, to keep a consistent posting cycle. I'm doing, like I said, five shows a week. I'd like to start posting them at a specific time during the day so that people know, okay, at 1 p.m. every day, every Monday through Friday, if I come back to MikeFromain.com, there's going to be a new post. So that's one of my goals is to start getting things scheduled more. Um, another one of my goals is... I'd like to eventually get uh, a custom theme for the site. I'd like to have something made, put down about two thousand dollars. I think it will cost. Yeah. Get a custom theme made, but I don't want to get that done until I'm sure about where I'm going with the site. Mm -hmm. I don't get something done, and I, I'm and my focus right now is getting uh, email signups, and then I I figure out. In a month's time, that oh, okay, I really want to get Twitter signups just as well. Like, and now I have to get everything changed, and I have to move everything around on the homepage to make sure that my Twitter's up on the top, and blah blah blah. I mean, it's I'm not ready for that yet, and I and I, I need to just take it a little slow for that. Um, another thing that I'm my goals is I'm planning on starting a monthly giveaway contest where I've been reaching out to my past guests and inviting them to or asking them to give away a, a prize which is like a, a product of theirs as a prize mm -hmm. and so each month uh, people that sign up for my list will have the chance to sign up for a contest where they can win there's a there's a plug-in or now it's not a plug-in anymore it's actually a, a service called contest domination okay. where you can run yeah, you can run contests and people uh, will sign up for your contest, and then the more people that they get to sign up, the more chance that they have to win the mm -hmm. contest. There's an incentive for people to share. There's an incentive for people to get other people involved in the contest. Where normally you wouldn't want other people to get involved in the contest because then there would be more competition for you. But yeah. now, when you sign up, you get one chance to win. But for every person that you refer that that joins the email list 
you get 10 more chances to sign up. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing that I'm doing. I'm, I'll probably have, uh, by the time I'm done, I'll probably have around $1,000 in prizes and about, I think it will be approximately 30 to 40 prizes that I'll be giving away each month. So I'm hoping that by doing that, I can give exposure to my guests, Mm -hmm. give my reasons to give away prizes, give my guests reasons to come on the show. Also, increase my exposure by uh, having my my readers share my content. Also, give my readers something back by giving them prizes. And I I mean, I think it's right now it's it's kind of in 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 the motions, but it's uh, I I think it's got a lot of potential to make a lot of people happy so mm-hmm. yeah that's my it's kind of my, my goals right now I'd like in like a year from now I'd like my show to be making more money I'd like my show to be helping more people um, I'd like I don't know I'd, I'd like it to be as time goes on more quality I want to get a better camera I want a nicer backdrop than <laughs> like, I'd like to some like nice office and yeah. some lighting lamps, but right now, I mean, I'm. That's not the most important thing. No, here. and it's for me the most important thing is just doing it and uh, getting it out there. And yeah, I mean, you've got is that is the same microphone? Blue you... microphone. It's a blue Yeti. Yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, it's not the best microphone out there, no. but it's but it's a uh, it does the trick. So. Yeah, yeah my, my very first interview, I just used the computer microphone. I couldn't understand anything afterwards. <laughs> so I immediately went out and got this. Well, thanks so much for uh, doing this. Definitely, uh, def- you know, wasn't expecting you to be all the way in Turkey when I first asked you. I was thinking, oh, you must be in Maine, Eastern time zone. So, but yeah, definitely, you know, got some stuff out and definitely feeling a bit more confident using using Skype uh, you know, first time, first time really using it, and gonna check out the video archive. And yeah, th- thanks for the encouragement and the example. You're you're very welcome. All right. Well, uh, I'll definitely see you on the forums, and I'm definitely gonna dig more into your website. Cool. Thank you very much, Mike. Okay. All the best. Yep. Bye. <laughs>